Hey everybody, I'm Richie, and it's Hillside Acres. Today I'm going to do a quick video on my, I don't even know what to call it, the cargo trailer, conversion to camper, toy hauler, off-grid camper, whatever, but we bought this because we have a Kawasaki Terex and we like to go on trips with it and we don't like to pay for hotels. It's a lot easier to go to a campground, but to buy a toy hauler that was designed to fit the Kawasaki Terex would be very expensive. So we went for a cheaper option. I like having a gooseneck trailer. This trailer is built very solid. The siding is 063, which is twice as thick as some of the other premium ones you're gonna buy in the market today. It's all aluminum construction. Uh, the flame, the floor, the decking, everything's aluminum. Empty, it's only 3,400 pounds. It's got two 7,000 pound axles. So that gives the GVW to 16,000 pounds because it compensates for the weight that's gonna be on the pin on the truck. So it's got these uh, dual barn style doors. I know most people want a ramp door, but the way this is set up, the back is really low to the ground. So to get the machine in and out, I'm able to just use two of these uh, car oil change ramps, put them down right there. And uh, the Kawasaki's able to crawl right up there. Uh, excuse the mess in there too. It's a, kind of been working on it over the last few days so it's a little bit messy in here so due to here how it opens up a little bit when you come in I didn't want to just drive the machine in there and take the chance of it moving to the side a little bit and then not being able to back out so I just made these simple little bumpers out of some uh, bad lumber that we had um, there's a little bit of stuff everywhere because we've been working in here so I put this little fan in the window here for when I'm running the generator and it's creating extra heat in here and the air conditioner built into the wall there also makes a pretty good amount of heat back here but it's really not too bad and the fan does help a lot. We've got these Ericsson tie down straps that go over the wheels of the Kawasaki and the shower was something I considered not putting in here because if we're at a campground there's probably a place to shower or if we're off grid there's probably a stream or a lake or something you go wash up in but we did decide to do something and we kept it very simple. We wanted to be able to take it down so it didn't take up room in the trailer. So for the shower, we just got this portable little pool that's got a drain on it. And to set it up, take this curtain. It's actually a two piece curtain. I mean, I would set the pool up a little nice for where to be using it, but we could break it right down and that you have a shower. Um, the water heater here is the Insa Hot 2. It's actually meant for washing horses. And this one has a lot more uh, flow than a normal uh, camping water heater that you'd buy. Uh, this is, I think, 2.6 gallons per minute. So with this water heater, um, you would typically have a propane hooked up to it. We don't right now because we obviously don't need hot water in here at the moment. But to show you how it works, this is the hose nozzle that it came with. Uh, we'll probably actually switch it out to something to be a little better for washing up. But gives us water back here when you got water supply. Um, I'd really like to uh, get like a pump that'll start pumping when you turn on the uh, supply for the water. So I could be able to draw the water out of like a 55 gallon drum or something from back here. Um, so if we don't have access to water, we could fill something up and just make it work from there. So back here, I have the Honda 2200 with the generator exhaust extension, just going right down and out through the floor. The floor is aluminum, I'm not too worried about that. I might put some heat wrap around here. Um, Got the uh, Berg system, so it's got a six gallon tank powering the Honda, so it'll run for about 48 hours before needing filling. Uh, my plan is to just fill it up once daily and I won't have to worry about it. And it'll need an oil change every four days if it's running continuous. I might do it every three because of the abnormally high temperatures back here. Um, this back part will get a little over 100 degrees with the uh, air conditioner exhausting back here. So I'll do a startup of the generator before I go into the living space. So you can see that you really don't hear it in there. 
So the way this works for the generator exhaust extension came with this uh, silicone hose right here. Just slides over and it's just a little hose clamp that goes on there. Um, this is heat rated for the exhaust temperatures. What I did, I just drilled a small hole in the aluminum floor over there to send the exhaust through so it could go outside. And that's about it. Just flip the switch to on. Shouldn't need any choke. Now, one pull, it fires right up. This generator really is nice. I got some D-rings down there so I could strap it down for when I'm driving. I'm gonna put some D-rings down for the extended tank as well. And the extended tank will be able to sit right underneath the Kawasaki and this fits with it in the back. So now I'm gonna enter the living space. So once I fired the generator up, the air conditioner automatically kicked on. Got a little LED light up there. Um, it's plenty for this little area. There's about 48 square feet of floor space. This little 5,000 watt air conditioner draws about, or 5,000 BTU air conditioner draws about 400 watts when running. So it's not much of a load on the Honda. The fridge only draws about 50 watts when running and that's on and off. It's about 400 watt startup for it. We have ran this little space heater just to test out in the Honda. So with 750 watts or 1500 watts, you could run it off the Honda. It just wouldn't be as efficient. We bought this little laundry sink, they call it, from Home Depot. It's actually really nice for an application like this because it's got a cabinet underneath it. And it's a pretty good size. If you wanted to wash some of your clothes in it, you could. Um, it's pretty nice. It's fair priced. It was only about $180. I'm spraying everything over the counters. Um, we just did some cheap melamine shelves, nothing special. We really are trying to keep this about as simple as we can because we're using it for camping. We're not living in this thing full time. I know a lot of people go all out and try and make it like home, but we used to camp in a tent, so this is a huge upgrade for us. Um, over here, built this box to help the dog get up on the bed and also us get up on the bed but it also doubles as a big storage area so there's not really much in there now we got a couple uh, waterproof bags that'll go in the kawasaki tackle box and we're gonna just gonna keep a lot of extra things that we would normally always need when we're camping like uh be good to keep a case of water in there some camping chairs uh whatever gear we need fishing stuff It'd be good to have in there so the king size bed fits perfectly above the attic of the gooseneck here. Uh, the trailer is, I believe, I think it's seven feet wide inside, and the king fits great. Um, it's six inches thick, it's surprisingly comfortable. I think it was only like $100 on Amazon. It came in like a vacuum packed bag, and then once you uh, open it up, it just fluffs up over a day or two. And I'm not sure if you could tell, everything in here is being run on that Honda generator, which is in the garage part of this. And I can't hear the generator whatsoever. I mean, I could hear it over the... The air conditioner is actually louder than the generator. I did a decibel test with an app on my phone, but they wanted money for it. So I did the three-day free trial and deleted it. Um, it's pretty hot in here right now because the air conditioner hasn't been running. It's actually 89 in here right now. We have tested this air conditioner out on days where it's 100 degrees outside and it gets it down to the high 60s in here with the sun beating on it and overnight it keeps it at 65 degrees which is great for sleeping. I still need to put a few more D-rings to be able to strap the fridge down and keep these cabinet doors from flopping around when we're driving. But the fridge is seems like a perfect size for a trailer like this. It's nice that we have the freezer section. So if we want to put some ice cube trays in there, if we're sleeping in here overnight and we want to go on a riding trip the next day, then we'll have fresh ice. We won't have to worry about stopping anywhere and have cold drinks and cold food in our machine throughout the day. One of the most important things in here is having a smoke detector as well as a CO detector. If we are in an enclosed space. You definitely don't want to mess with any of that, especially having a generator running in there. There's also a CO detector in the garage part. So if there was a leak in the generator extension, that would be the first one to go off before it made it into here. 
So we obviously have a little bit more work to do before it, it can be a completely off-grid trailer. Right now it's good to go if we want to set up and go to a campground. We actually do have a, a hole there where I could just plug it into shore power and not have to run the generator if I don't have to. But I'd really like to set it up to be able to just go anywhere and be good to go and have air conditioning and power when you need it. So I'm hoping the next video with this trailer will be us going on a trip up to Maine. Um, that's what we really like to do in the summer. We've been really swamped with things to do around here with everything going on. So we really appreciate you watching this video. If you don't mind, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and uh, the notification bell if you don't mind. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you on the next one.